Today on Eat More Vegans, we're smoking prime rib. Stick around, I'll show you how I do it. Hey carnivores, my name's Alan, welcome to Eat More Vegans. Uh, if you've been here before, you might have seen a couple of weeks ago, I showed you how to break down a whole seven bone rib roll, uh, the whole bone in prime rib from meat and bone. And this is one of the cuts that we saved out of that. Actually a three bone, seven pound prime rib that I promised you I was gonna show you how to make. Now last night, I actually trimmed this up and got it into a dry brine. So let's show you some footage from that. As you can see, I took the tail off, I removed the fat from the top because we want as much meat exposed to the spices as we can. We don't need that outside fat. Uh, I cleaned up the bones just a little bit and then I dry brined it. I put a whole bunch of kosher salt around all of the meat area and then got it in the fridge overnight. So here we are today with this dry brined piece of beef and as you can see like it was already incredibly marbled like way more marbled than a prime angus uh, g1 certified piece of meat should be but now whilst i dry brine it look at the definition in the fat here in the marbling perfection this is going to be really delicious when that fat renders so let's go ahead and start by getting a binder on it so today, instead of tallow uh, or oil as a binder, I'm actually gonna be using Worcestershire sauce, Worcestershire, Worcestershire sauce. And uh, that's gonna be the base of the first layer of flavor. Did you know that Worcestershire sauce is made with anchovies? Uh, so this is gonna bring like this umami flavor to the first layer uh, of meat here. All right, so the next layer of flavor is I'm just gonna use a pepper and garlic mix. This is two thirds pepper, one third granulated garlic. Uh, now the reason I don't use an SPG, a salt pepper garlic, is because we've already got salt. We already dry brined it. That salt absorbed in the refrigerator all the way to the center. We've got an even distribution of salt through the meat. So now we just need to get flavor onto the surface. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a pretty liberal coating of my pepper and garlic. Okay, now notice that the ribeye cap has started to separate here. That's because I did that super trim and got all the fat out, but that's okay. I'm gonna show you how we're gonna put that all back together so it doesn't affect the cook in just a minute. Okay, so we're gonna make our uh, herb paste for the outside. So this is Kerrygold butter. I like it, it's a super high fat content, but you can use whatever butter you want. I would not use salted butter here because you've already salted the meat. Uh, but if you didn't dry brine, I think that's fine. And to this, I'm gonna add about a tablespoon of fresh, finely chopped uh, rosemary leaves, tablespoon of chopped mint, chopped oregano, and fine chopped thyme leaves. And then I've also got, now this is dried chopped garlic, and I've also got dried onion flakes. And now I'm just gonna use my hand to just mix this around and make an herb butter. All right, now let's get this butter onto the prime rib. Now, as long as that ribeye cap is separating a little bit, I'm gonna go ahead and stuff some of my herb butter in there. And now I'm just gonna coat it pretty liberally all over the outside with my hands. Okay, now that we've got our uh, herb butter on the prime rib, I told you I was gonna show what we were gonna do about the shape and about the, uh, the ribeye cap that is coming off. So we are gonna truss this and that's gonna bring the prime rib into the shape that we want. So I'm gonna start under this first area between these first two bones and I'm gonna tie a surgeon's knot here just over twice. We should call this a pit master's knot because you know, we use it too. Why do surgeons get dibs? They think they're so special. Now I'm gonna come around and come under between the second and third bone. Feed this through and then pull it taut. And then I'm gonna come around the outside here, just outside this third bone. And I'm gonna pull it through again. And this time I'm gonna come underneath and all the way around. And then I will tuck it under my first tie here under the first loop and that will hold my trussing in place. Okay, and now we've got the shape that we want. It's gonna hold that shape through the whole smoke. We've got our butter herb crust along the outside. 
Uh, so let's talk about the grill. This is Yoda. He's our Yoda YS 1500 pellet grill. He's running at 250 degrees Fahrenheit using a combination of oak and cherry pellets. Oak's got just that amazing, strong flavor. And cherry's not just sweet, but also brings a really cool color to the meat. And so uh, let's go give Yoda a chance uh, to get some smoke on this. I'll meet you over there. Okay, so we got the top shelf off of the smoker today. We don't need it, we're just using the bottom shelf. And we're gonna put the prime rib right in the middle here, and we're gonna do it with the meat facing the fire and the bones facing the smokestack, and this way the heat and the smoke will come up off the firebox, over the prime rib, and then up and out the smokestack. And then I've also got this temperature probe. I'm gonna put it right into the center of the prime rib right in the middle so that I can tell what the temperature is gonna be. Now, this is gonna smoke for probably about two hours at this temperature, could even be a little bit more. We're not gonna bother. We're gonna let that butter and those uh, herbs get in there and I'm gonna monitor the temperature and we'll be back when it hits 115 degrees internal. And then it's gonna get exciting. Okay, it's been two hours, we're uh, almost exactly two hours and three minutes. Uh, and according to the app, we've reached that critical 115 degrees. Now that's not where we're stopping. We're gonna sear and bring it the rest of the way up to about 125 degrees before we serve it. But I'm gonna open it up for the first time and see what this thing looks like and uh, pull it off, put it in a pan, cover it in foil, let it rest while I get Yoda up to searing temperature. You wanna see what it looks like? Check it out. Oh yeah, that's what I'm talking about. You see that color? That is the smoke. It's cooked perfectly. We've got a nice crust on it. So I'm gonna pull this out and I'm gonna set it here in this pan. And then I'm gonna cover the pan in aluminum. All right. Okay, now that is gonna rest for a couple of minutes. I'm gonna turn Yoda up to 450 degrees to a searing temperature. And uh, once it's up, you're gonna see why I like the 1500 as my favorite of the pellet grills, because there's one feature that makes this really fun. We'll be right back. Okay, we're up to temp. You can see we're billowing smoke. I'm gonna put these heat gloves on because it's gonna be hot in there. Uh, I'm not gonna touch fire or anything with these. That I wouldn't do with these. Those I use those big barbecue gloves for. But this will make it easy for me to move that prime rib around while we're searing. Now let me show you, I told you I was gonna tell you why I like the YS1500 better than any of the other pellet smokers or even any of the other Yoder smokers. It's not just about size, it's about this handle. So when I open this up, and then you'll see I pull this handle open, that actually opens up the firebox and exposes us to direct flame. So I'm gonna be able to open up that prime rib get it on that direct flame and do our sear right on the grill without having to remove any components or anything else like you do with all of the other uh, pellet grills. So enjoy this, we're gonna sear this, I'll bring it back into the kitchen, and then you get to watch us taste with some special friends. Enjoy. Okay, that was fun. I'm gonna take this into the kitchen. We're gonna let it rest for about 15 minutes that all those juices get absorbed back into the meat. I cannot wait to cut into this and see what it looks like and what it tastes like. I'll meet you back in the kitchen. Hey, welcome back to the kitchen. We've got some guests with us again on the show. I'd like to introduce Leah. You guys know Leah if you've been here before and Leah's friend, Katie. Uh, they go to school together. If you watched the Goat Leg video and you saw Lindsay, they're all friends. It's all part of one big friends group. So welcome to the show, Katie. And of course, it's a daddy-daughter show. So here's Katie's dad, but you can call him Kyle. That's what I call him. But if you want to call him Katie's dad, that's okay. I think you answered that too, right? Because I answered Aaliyah's dad. Okay, so we've got a prime rib. So I actually cut this from a giant prime rib on another video. 
and then I smoked this for a couple of hours and then seared it on the smoker over the open flame. So I hope that it tastes as good as it looks because I think it looks pretty good. Don't you think, Leah? That I did that, that I do good on the looks department. All right, this is uh, this is way more knife than you need for this, by the way. This is. Uh, the uh, uh, Scimitar Butcher's Knife from Dahlstrong. Uh, I actually did a review of those. If you haven't seen that, I'll put, uh, actually I'll put, I'll put a link right up here to the video where, uh, where I reviewed these, uh, my unboxing video. I gotta tell you, I am in love with these Japanese steel knives from Dahlstrong. All right, so I'm cutting off the strings that we trust it with. All right, you ready? Ready. I'm a little nervous. All right, here we go. Okay, that's a sharp knife. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> Look at that, Leah. Is this, uh, is this juicy enough for you guys? Look at this. Oh my goodness. All right, we're done. Nobody gets a taste. <laughs> Just kidding. Okay, let me, uh, let me cut off. I'm gonna take the bones off of here so that I can cut uh, good slices. These are, uh, these are dad treats. You and I can have these later. I'll cut this in half. All right. Those are, uh, those are for us right there. All right. Here we go. One slice of herb crusted prime rib. Oh my God, look at the juices dripping down that as I cut this. So I'm gonna take off the cap because that's not fair because we already know the cap is gonna be better than any other piece of meat. So I'll take this one and I will cut this into pieces. All right, so here's a tasting size piece for Katie, a tasting size piece for Leah, a tasting size piece for Kyle, a tasting size piece for me. Oh, wait a minute, I cut an extra piece. Oh, I got an extra fork too. Who's this for, Leah? Ah, uh, that's right, you guys get some. All right, let me put it on a fork for you. All right, this is for you guys. I'll leave it right there, you grab it. Are you guys ready to taste? Oh yeah. All right, here we go. Cheers, cheers. All right. Mm. <laughs> I don't think I messed that up. Guys, I think this method works. Honestly, this is a fantastic piece of meat. You saw what it looked like the whole way along. You can get these as a three bone uh, roast from Meat and Bone, or you can do what I did and buy the whole prime rib. Cook the whole prime rib this way, or you can break it down like I did and cook just a family size one. This is actually gonna go upstairs to the dining room and become dinner for Katie and Katie's whole family, and we're gonna join them. Make sure you check out the video right there, the video I put right there. And if you've already seen it, watch the one that's down here. We'll see you next time on Eat More Vegans. Vegans.